ATR is a very electric aircraft. In fact, almost all of the systems are controlled or operated with electric power. Therefore, it's important for the pilots to know how the electric systems work. Hi, my name is Magnar Nordahl. I'm an ATR typewriting instructor and captain. And this channel is all about aviation. In this video, I will give a short introduction to the electrical systems in ATR aircraft. You may find this useful when you watch videos about other systems or when you watch my coming videos about accident investigations. This presentation will take just a few minutes. But to get a full understanding of the electrical systems, you will have to study the flight crew operating manual for several hours. We will start with some definitions. DC stands for direct current and is an electrical charge flowing in one direction. This electrical power is produced by generators. It is commonly used in low voltage applications on electronic circuits like computers. When installed in a metal frame, such as an aircraft, there is only need for one cable to a system, because the negative contactor can be wired directly to the frame of the aircraft. DC also has the benefit of being able to store electric energy in batteries. AC is alternating current, and is an electric current which reverses direction. The rate the direction changes is called frequency. In ATR aircraft, the frequency is 400 Hz, or 400 times per second. AC electrical power is produced by alternators, which ATR calls AC generators. To convert DC into AC, you use an inverter, also called a static inverter. To convert AC into DC, you use a rectifier. ATR calls it Transformer Rectifier Unit, or TRU. A bus or a bus bar is a strip made of conductive metal, such as copper or aluminium. The bus is used to distribute electric power to the systems. ATR aircraft have many bus bars, mainly to provide redundancy. Here is an example from the ATR. The negative terminal of the main battery is attached to the airframe. The positive terminal is attached to the hot main battery bus, which enables the attached systems to be powered when the battery switch is off. Each system has a circuit breaker, and the negative terminals are attached to the airframe. Next in the line is the battery contactor. It is activated when you select the battery switch on. The main battery will now power the essential bus and the systems attached to it. Now, let's have a look at the complete systems. We start with the batteries. They are 24 volt. The main battery, to the right, powers the hot main battery bus and the DC essential bus. Some systems powered by the essential bus are air conditioning, smoke detectors, oxygen supply, fuel pumps and engine start allowing you to start the engines with battery power alone. The emergency battery is smaller than the main battery and powers the hot emergency battery bus and the DC emergency bus. Some systems powered by the emergency bus are standby horizon, VHF radio number one, transponder number one, and the trims. In other words, it enables you to fly the aircraft. The batteries also power the standby buses. The DC standby bus powers flaps control, landing gear control, and VOR ILS receiver number one. The AC standby bus is powered via inverter number one and supplies the standby pitot tube heat, the flaps position indicator. In other words, the standby bus bars enable you to fly an instrument approach and land. Furthermore, the main battery powers the ground handling bus. It supplies the refueling system and the cargo door, which are electrical operated. 
this bus is not powered in flight. Then we have two DC starter generators. They are attached to their respective engines and give 28 volts electric power. The starter generator acts as a starter up to 45% RPM and above 61.5 RPM it acts as a generator. DC generator 1 supplies DC bus 1, which is one of the two main bus bars. Some systems powered by DC bus 1 are the automatic pressurization control, the stall warning system, captain instrument and the weather radar. DC bus 1 also charges the emergency battery and powers its associated bus bars, as well as inverter number 1. DC Gen 2 supplies DC bus 2 the other main bus. And pay attention now, because this bus bar powers the automatic function of the hydraulic auxiliary pump and the automatic function of the rudder travel limit unit, the TLU. There have been some incidents where the crew missed those items and were not able to maintain directional control after landing. This bus 2 also charges the main battery and powers its associated bus bars as well as inverter 2. Then we have three not so important bus bars, the DC service bus and utility bus 1 and 2. They provide light to the cabin, they power the toilet flushing, but not on the earliest AT variants, and power the recirculation fans in the air conditioning system. It's all about comfort. As you can see, each DC generator powers their own side. In case one of the generators is offline, the other generator can power the other side through a bus tie contactor, BTC. The BTC operates automatically but can be isolated manually by selecting the push button to isolate, isol. The two inverters supply constant frequency AC power to AC bus 1 and AC bus 2 respectively. Each bus bar is in fact two bus bars, one supplying 26 volt and the other 115 volt. The AC bus bar supplies several avionics. As mentioned earlier, inverter 1 also supplies the AC standby bus. In case of an inverter failure, an automatic bus type relay, BTR, ensures that one inverter can supply all AC bus bars. When this external power is connected, the DC generators are disconnected automatically and the ground handling bus is powered by external power via DC service bus. And this is what it looks like during normal operation. But we are not finished yet. There is one more electrical system and that is the AC wild frequency system. It is called AC wild because the frequency is variable. The reason is that the AC wild generators are attached to the propeller gearbox. While the AC constant frequency system operates at 400 Hz, the AC wild frequency system operates from 341 to 488 Hz, depending on the propeller rotation speed, called NP. The voltage is 115 or 200. The ACY system power systems that are needed for taxi and flight, for example taxi lights, landing lights, hydraulic pumps and ice protection. There is also an ACY service bus which provides heating in the galley and on early AT variants the toilet flushing. The ACY electrical system has the same redundancy as the DC electrical system. When one generator is offline, the other generator powers both main AC wild buses. But in that case, the AC wild service bus is shed, because the generators have limited capacity. ATR 500 and 600 variants have a transformer rectifier unit, or TRU. It is powered by AC wild bus 2. In the event of loss of both DC generators, the TRU will supply DC emergency bus, DC, DC essential bus and both standby bus bars. This ensures that the batteries will not be drained 
and is a requirement for extended twin operations or ETOPS. ATR aircraft with TRU can be approved for 120 minutes ETOPS. And that's all for this time. A short presentation like this cannot show all the details, but I hope you got a basic understanding about the electrical systems. Please support this channel by clicking like, subscribe and share with your friends. Thank you for watching and happy learning!